There's been a industry insider who's been giving away the sales numbers of people at Tor Books, Sifwa, and other places where the SJWs have infested publishing to show that these people have no fans. They are selling no books. They are just making themselves feel self-important by their own words. And nobody exemplifies that more than John Scalzi. I have his recent sales numbers and what's going on in his life to make him go absolutely crazy on the internet. And I will be going over that soon, much like I showed that Zoe Quinn sold no books and Patrick Tomlinson sold no books. The president of SIFWA sells no books. John Scalzi sells a lot less than you think, even though he's been propped up by the media. More to come. Hi, my name is John Delarose. I am a number one best-selling author and an award-winning comic creator. I've got a new book out on Indiegogo right now. I'm doing this all myself. I have no corporate media behind me. I don't get New York Times reviews saying it's the best thing ever for my copy of Heinlein like uh, John Scalzi did. I'm just doing it myself. I'm making fun books. I'm making quality entertainment without any degeneracy in it. Just pure PG fun that anybody can read. And we're doing that right here. Uh, High School Girl in the Crusades is about exactly what it sounds like it is. There's a lot of action and adventure. Just awesome, awesome entertainment for you by somebody who doesn't hate you. Check it out today. That link is in the description below. All right. John Scalzi went on a Twitter tirade the other day, of course, as one does. These SJWs always do these threads on Twitter. They make a full blog rather than just using Twitter for what it's supposed to be for, for a quick post for quick thoughts. It's really not the spot to do something like this, but they always do this. So here he goes off because people are noticing that every year the Hugo Awards are not having any whites or males getting their uh, books nominated anymore. And it's because of virtue signaling SJWs all the time. It is completely a racial thing. It is completely a gender thing. And it's because a bunch of cat ladies, a bunch of angry cat ladies took over these Hugo Awards where you only need about 800 votes really to win a Hugo Award at all these days. Uh, everybody else who was normal checked out. And now you have no normal people winning awards anymore. You have no normal people voting for these awards anymore. And so it's a total train wreck. John Scalzi knows this. He knows that the science fiction industry is collapsing, that Tor Books is dying under its own weight of its contract for $5 million with John Scalzi, which is really, really sinking them fast. He is losing tons of money from them, and I'll show you the stats on that in a second. So he is going full cope on Twitter to try to make some diversity ploy to try to stay relevant when he has no relevancy anymore. Here he goes. So, I do have a take on how this movement functions, strictly as a practical matter, and involving the Hugos and other awards. I will share it with you in further tweets in this thread. And here we are, a quote from a blog. For three years running, there have been precisely zero white men nominated for Best Hugo for Novel. You know, with white men being a large portion of the population, that makes no sense. If representation matters, there should be some representation, you'd think. And last, actually, when it was John Scalzi, who, you know, I mean, we can call him a man. If, we, we don't have to go there, but you'll see the thumbnail picture for this. Anyway. Back in 2013, it suggests a clear aesthetic shift on how sci-fi works, one on the scale of the rise of New Wave in the 60s and the sudden arrival of cyberpunk in the 80s. However, nobody has formulated a take on how this movement functions. Uh, it has. It's just a movement of people who are ganging up against men in general. They've been trying to kick men out of science fiction, out of entertainment. If you look at Hollywood these days, they don't really have any strong male leads anymore. They only have some kind of gay guys walking around. Uh, while the women take charge of everything. John Scalzi exemplifies that persona. That's exactly who he is. He is one of those gamma male nerds who you would have given a swirly to in high school, who believes that he's self-important, even though his works are completely derivative and awful. He won the award because he played the game. He won the award because he was propped up. And now, now, the people being propped up are the next generation of that, who are people who are only going to be black trans lesbians from here on out. This is how it works, as John Scalzi says. The modern corpse of acquiring editors, both in New York publishing and in short fiction, has significantly more women and LGBTQ plus folks, and more diversity generally. Stories they buy reflect their interest, and the sales numbers are good. They're not good. We'll get to that in a second. So they keep at it. 
It's not about sales numbers with these people. It's about social agenda. It's a bunch of nerds, a bunch of cat ladies. It's a bunch of just degenerate people who have gone into these industries specifically with the intention of taking it over, specifically with the intention of destroying it for their own pet perverted interests. And that's exactly what John Scalzi caters towards. If you read uh, the beginning of his book, it was, uh, gosh, I don't remember even what it was called. I'll get to it in a second. It has this like weird dominatrix woman like having her weird like reverse harem of men and women where she's beating them and doing sexual tortures with them. And that's exactly what all these people think about full time. That's John Scalzi's mind in a nutshell. So that's what they want to put out there. That's what they want being read. That's what they want to indoctrinate children into. And John Scalzi's all too happy to help make that happen. After all, they gave him an award in $5 million. When the puppy nonsense happened, which is people saying, hey, the books that people actually read should get awards, people committed to more diverse storytelling either entered or re-entered the Hugo voting pool to counteract the puppy group brigade. No, actually, the Worldcon numbers have dropped significantly. Every year, it's been less and less. It's gone from 12,000 to 10,000 to 6,000 and less this year. We're looking at those numbers now, and I show them to you every time. People are checking out, at least the normal people. Only the weirdos are remaining in these voting pools. Uh, the puppies and their simple appetizers flounced, uh, normal people. Those interested in diverse stories stayed, which is nobody. Generally speaking, the stories over the last few years written by more diverse storytellers and selected by more diverse editors are really fucking good. The table stakes for award considerations are higher these days, and all writers have to step up to this new level. All these stories are navel-gazing nonsense just about how gay somebody could be or how trans somebody should be. They're not that interesting. They're not fun. They're not good. They're not even well-written. John Scalzi's just making a ton of hope here for the fact that he's not winning awards himself. White dudes are not excluded from the Hugos or other awards. They are. They win their share. They don't. But the operative phase is their share. The field is wider now, and better, and the default to them has increased significantly. Sandifier is correct that the shift is as significant as any that has come before, and possibly more so, because the previous movements were largely about white dudes. But I would suggest that it's not only about aesthetics of today's sci-fi, it's also about mechanics of the field. It's just about aesthetics. It's only about somebody's skin color, or their, uh, their who they're banging, or whatever, or what they're banging at this point. Jesus Christ. That's all they care about. That's all they want to talk about full time. And that's all you see at these conventions. All you see is panels of people whining, what's it like to be a black queer ally of color? And and that's all that nobody wants to go to that. Nobody wants to participate in that. And that's why the sales are terrible. Who is acquiring? Who is voting? And who is writing? Because that's what's selling making a lar mark in larger culture. Doubt it. All that's making a mark in culture is brands from before. All you see is Spider-Man. All you see is Superman and Batman. There are things from before this nonsense started where people are trying to latch on to the last vestiges of good American culture. And that's why movements like what I'm doing are fighting back to bring that back to American culture. And I'd argue that anything I do, anything I write, is far more relevant than anything John Scalzi will ever write in his entire life. He goes off a little bit longer, but there's nothing really more to see here. It's all complete garbage that he's trying to make up, and we are trying to push things new and forward. But John Scalzi, with a big $5 million contract, should be selling $5 million worth of books if this is the case. If that degeneracy is something that he wants in this last Emperox, which is the name I forgot, where he's got all this creepy, weird sexual shit in it, uh, which is showing his own proclivities, it should be selling tons and tons of books. But no, we see that between the two editions, he sold about 12, 13,000 copies. Now, if he's making $5 per book for tour off of this, that means he's making $60,000 over this, which is great. That's a living. That's something that I make over my books over the course of a year. But here's the deal. He is the top writer at Tor. He's won Hugo Awards. He's got Blue Check. He's got the New York Times behind them. He's got everything. He's got a contract for $5 million. And if you break that down to 14 books, he's got he's to make at least $300,000 a book to even get close to breaking even. That means he's losing $240,000 a book for tour books minimum. That's if they're making $5 a book, which it's usually a little less than that. He is actually destructive for their company. It's been going down as each book comes out. This is in, uh, this is in uh, chronological order here as we're looking at it. And as you can see, it down, down, down. So these are bigger books versus different things here. But the newest one is really the lowest out of the entire group. 
and he is bleeding readers every single time he comes out with one of these trash books. We have so many, so many different numbers here. This fuzzy nation he promoted for a while. Look at that. Only sold 2,000 books. Now, look, uh, for me, when I have no corporation behind me, I've got no group of editors and all this stuff to support. If I sell 2,000 books, which I, which I do regularly with my books, that is a good day. I make some good money off of that. Uh, if I sell 25,000 books, which I have with my first steam and country novel, that crushes it. But I don't have $5 million contract. I don't have $300,000 of advances to repay. It's just all money into my pocket. There's no middlemen in this. John Scalzi's agents got to get paid. Tours got to get paid. The editor gets paid. The copywriter gets paid. All down the line. It's nuts. He's losing money like crazy for them. And that's why he's trying so hard to fit in with this new group. He's not going to fit in, though, because it's all about identity politics. And John, I'm sorry, you're the wrong identity. Here we go. Let me know what you think about this cope. Leave a comment down below. Hit the like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.